Hey everyone, um, Mitchell Hora. Thanks, Larry, for for inviting me out. Um, wasn't sure I was going to be here. It was kind of a last minute deal. We were supposed to be over in Nebraska meeting with uh, an ethanol plant, so it worked out to come a little late. We were up in uh, Brookings, South Dakota last night, um, so the drive down in the snow took us a little bit, a little while. But excited to be here and uh, share a little bit of insight. As Larry was saying, my name is Mitchell. I'm a seventh generation farmer from down in Washington County. And uh, yeah, uncle and some family right up around this area. Um, uncle Greg, my, my cousin Joe, some of you guys might know as well. But um, Continue Mag is a company I started um, quite a while ago. And really the role that we bring and what I want to share with you guys today is talking about carbon intensity scores and being able to put a number on the work that you all are doing on the farm or in the farm that you're working with. Okay, so I'm um, going to go th quick through some of this. Um, just because I want to leave time for a couple of questions if we can, but also I'll get to uh, more info like on my um, online at, at Continuum Ag and all that um, if you want to learn some more different stuff here. But let me switch, swap through a couple different things. So there's a lot of talk and been a lot of noise over the last couple of years with carbon, okay? And these carbon programs, I've been involved in this carbon stuff since 2019 as a potential offtake for all this work that we're doing in building soil health. Whether that be building up biology, utilizing some of the products, decreasing tillage, cover crop, manure, those kind of things. And so I've been watching this carbon space for a while, trying to figure out, okay, hey, we're doing these practices that these carbon programs want us to do. We should be able to get paid, right? Well, these carbon programs have been mostly about change of practice and have been kind of privatized cost share, trying to get folks to plant a cover crop or reduce tillage. What I'm wanting to show you guys today is the ability to just define what your actual footprint is, not just check a box based on plant a cover crop or reduce tillage, but define your actual carbon footprint, your actual impact based on your ability to be efficient with nutrients, drive good yields with reduced inputs and reduced efficiency over time, but what I like about carbon intensity and what I'll show you guys is it's not about check the box and plant a cover crop. It's not about check the box and do no-till or strip-till. That ties in, but it's not the requirement. And I think this opens up the room, opens up a lot of opportunity for a lot of the folks in the room. Okay, so what's bringing this about is in the Inflation Reduction Act passed in August of 2022, there was an amendment to the 45Z tax code. 45Z is for low carbon renewable biofuels, ethanol, <coughs> renewable diesel, biodiesel, and sustainable aviation fuel. And this tax credit is due to start on January 1 of this coming year for fuel produced in 2025. That fuel produced in 2025 is gonna be produced with our crop that we're gonna grow this year. That's why I'm here. To show you guys how to get ahead of this, and show you what I'm doing on my own farm and where I believe there's opportunity for you to tell your story and uh, put some dollars <coughs> in your pocket. So how this works, ethanol companies have to start, uh, in order to tap into these marketplaces, federal marketplaces, ethanol companies will report their carbon intensity score. That's basically the carbon footprint per gallon. The carbon footprint per gallon is influenced by what happens at the ethanol plant, what happens with the energy used for that ethanol production, and what happens in the supply chain, namely the corn or soybeans. And these companies can earn tax credits and substantial dollars for lowering their overall footprint of the gallon. These companies have been able to get premiums today, like in California, the low carbon fuel markets. This is similar, except it's a slightly different scoring system and it's a federal production tax credit, not necessarily a sale like premium at the pump. So the push of this is what's driven companies to try to figure out how they're gonna tap into this. Well, they could put in a pipeline, and we won't go down that road, because I'm sure uh, we could go down some rabbit holes here. But a pipeline lowers the carbon intensity score of a gallon of ethanol by about 30 points. Let's see if I have that on the next one of these. 
Um, a pipeline, okay, so a gallon of ethanol today, on average, has a CI score of 55. A pipeline reduces it from 55 to 25. Cuts the CI score pretty well in half. That's why it's been such a big push, okay? To get these credits and also to monetize in markets like California. But what I'm telling you is whether a pipeline goes through or not, we won't go into that, but a pipeline takes care of half of the problem. Corn, on average, has a CI score of 29. It's essentially the remaining half of the footprint or half of the quote unquote problem. Today, the Department of Energy puts that number on our corn as a default. It's always been the default of 29. For the first time, because of this amended tax credit, we can actually tell our real number and not have to use the default for the Department of Energy. Okay? Your score is calculated based on your fertilizer, if you're using manure, what's your yield, what's your pesticide, what's your tillage, your fuel usage, are you using a cover crop? It's all those inputs. Okay? Think of it as everything that goes into that acre divided by the bushels coming off the acre. Today, the Department of Energy has our number at 29. On average, we found that our farmers in reality have a score of 9.9. .9. And on my farm, my score last year was negative 4.1. So our opportunity here is to be able to work with our biofuel producers and say, hey, there's more than one solution here for being able to lower the footprint of these gallons of ethanol, prop up American biofuel, and get those dollars back here to our rural communities. And it's not a exclusive either or. If the pipeline goes through, that's going to reduce the score by 30 points or whatever. Who knows what's going to happen? I can't tell the future. But nonetheless, with or without, the corn is a major driver of that score. And us in the room here have the ability to say, we can be part of the solution, but we got to get paid. We got to get paid for the effort that we're doing. So how this works is an ethanol company earns two pennies per gallon for every point that they reduce their CI score. Okay, on average today, national average ethanol CI score is about 55. I'm going to use round numbers, okay? So on the left-hand side, it's kind of hard to see if you guys want these slides, they're on my YouTube page and, and all over the place, but an ethanol plant today, on average, has a score of 55. If they put in a pipeline, they're now at 25. The delta between a baseline of 50 and their new score of 25 means that they've reduced their score from 50 to 25. That 25 point reduction times two points per gallon means that they would earn a 50 cent per gallon tax credit. If you're a 100 million gallon ethanol plant, it's $50 million if you're following my math. $50 million a year in these credits. That's if you've got a pipeline to reduce that score and put you around 25. However, the corn can create the same kind of benefit. Now, how this will work is as you sell your corn to the ethanol plant or through the co-op and then to the ethanol plant, when you sell the corn, you can sell the data and be able to get paid for helping them to go from left to right on these graphs, lower the carbon intensity score, earn tax credits using you as part of the solution. Because no matter what, whether the pipelines go through or not, they won't be built by the time this starts less than a year from now. So our, our potential here and the opportunity that I want to drive home with you guys is knowing what your score is, is step one. Today, the Department of Energy says that you have a score of 29. Our average farmer actually, in reality, has a score of 9.9. .9. My score this year was negative four. You need to figure out what's your score. For every point you have reduced your score from 29, it's worth just shy of six cents per point per bushel. Therefore, if you've reduced your score from 29 to 19, that 10 point drop is worth nearly 60 cents. 10. 10 uh, points times six cents, 60 cents a bushel if your score is, is 19. Our average guy has a score around nine. That's worth $1.20 a bushel. Real money. Now, 
I don't know how much the ethanol plant's going to share with you and me. I'm working on that. And actually, to introduce uh, Petra is here for my team. We've been working, meeting with ethanol plants to make sure that farmers get their equitable share of these credits. That if farmers are going to be a major part of the solution, they need to be adequately compensated. Okay? But the only way you're going to be compensated for your data and for being part of the solution to tap into these massive tax credits, the only way you're going to get paid is knowing what your, data, what your score is. Knowing what you've got, knowing the value of that data, and in order to really be in position to do that, you're likely going to want to get that data third party verified on a field by field basis. Okay, that's what Continuum Ag does. It's $5 an acre. We're working with Larry and other guys to help to make that easy and to facilitate it because it is going to be a lot of stuff. A lot of data. We got to document basically everything that we're doing on our farms. You guys are already collecting varying amounts of data, but we've got to pull that together to run these scores. We'll make it easy. It won't be that bad. Okay? It is a couple bucks to get it done to make sure that we can deploy the resources to do it. But having a verified score now gives you value that you can go and sell. The ethanol company can buy your low CI bushels. They can create these tax credits using you as a solution to tap into these dollars because the pipeline's not there. Maybe it'll be in the future, maybe not, no idea. <coughs> but in the meantime, with or without it, a huge driver of the solution is sitting here in the room. So um, we have a software that enables this to get done. I think we'll kind of stop there too and ask some questions, or take a couple questions here too. But uh, we have a software called Topsoil. If you want to see where your score is, go to topsoil.ag. You fill out a farm profile. You'll, when you log in, it's just your name and password. Okay, so I set up and started my own software because as a farmer and as an agronomist, I wanted to own my own data and make sure that the farmers own their data, own their score, so that they're in control of getting paid. Step number one is give visibility on what is your score, what is your opportunity, and where are you today? If you're doing conventional tillage, it doesn't matter. Figure out what your score is is step number one. So that's a topsoil.ag. You fill out a profile. It takes 10, 15 minutes. Happy to get you somebody that can help out. But 10, 15 minutes, you fill out a farm profile. And then ask you what crops you grow. Just fill out a profile for corn and soybeans, whatever you're growing. And uh, it asks all the things kind of on the left-hand side there. Do you plant a cover crop? What do you do for fertilizer, tillage, planting info, yield, um, your energy usage, like diesel fuel usage? And uh, just a little survey. With that survey, you can unlock your score. If you just, you know, so our, the verification system that we do is to take this score and get it field by field. Because every field is going to have slightly different management or different yield and therefore a different score. So that's why we charge five bucks an acre. To document this at a field by field level and get you a verified score on your 2024 corn. If you don't want to do that full thing, and you think I'm full of a bunch of baloney, but you still want to see what your score is, we do offer just 500 bucks and you can see your score. No commitment, no like not the full year verification thing, um, but you can go to Topsoil and you can see that. What's so cool about this is that you can see your score, which in this case, okay, so, and I know, sorry, we've got two screens, but to, to read this, you've got in the middle here is that current score. Up in the upper left is a score, or in the top middle is a score of 24.8. A score of 24.8, I forget, this is like 220 bushel corn. 24.8 score is worth about 52 bucks an acre in total tax credits. I forget what that would be, what, uh, 15 cents a bushel or something like that. On the right hand side, what we've done is you can create, you can toggle your, or from there we get you a, a certificate and stuff that you can go take the ethanol plant. But we have this tool built out where you can be sitting down with Larry or with, with somebody else in your operation. You can play with your score and run scenarios. What if we change our fertilizer? What if we use strip till? What if we do plant a cover crop? What if we do manure instead of synthetic fertilizer? Those kind of things. And how this works is you can see your score, in this case 24.8. You can play with different practices tap the recalculate button and see what your score could be. This is for your specific farm. It's nuanced county by county, and we show you what the financial opportunity 
would be, um, so you can start the conversation. All of us in this room provide a lot of value in our data for these low carbon or sustainable supply chains. And in order to tap into those dollars, make sure you get paid, you need to know what your data is worth. So that's what it's about, documenting field by field, running reports, and we work with a verifier actually out of Des Moines um, to, uh, to get those scores. Um, happy to dig into it some more, but let me kind of stop there. I'll, I'll switch to my uh, like kind of contact slide or whatever, but any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, is this just to end users such as ethanol, ethanol plants, or can you sell this to other companies? They're all looking for lower scores. I mean, it's a great question. Okay, so his question is, why just ethanol, right? Okay, so the reason that we're talking biofuel today is because of the tax credit. The 45Z tax credit is dollars from the IRS in the form of a tax credit to a biofuel manufacturer. That's why there's the dollars there. Now, I'm bullish on this concept as a farmer. I'm in Washington County, right? We got a lot of hogs. My, my corn goes to be pigs. My corn doesn't go to the ethanol plant. But my carbon negative corn is going to end up going to the ethanol plant because my pork guy, they don't have the ability to monetize this. They can't just pay more for my corn. They can't just pay more and not be able to get any benefit out of it. So where I see this going is it will go beyond low carbon biofuel, which is currently being propped up by the government, propped up by tax credits, same old, same old, right? But in the future, it'll be free market opportunities or the large financial institutions or the big supply chain companies saying, hey, we got to meet our sustainability goals and now here's a precedent that's being set. A scoring system and a business model that I believe can be copied and pasted into these free market efforts to live beyond tax credits. I don't like this being a tax credit thing and I don't want the government telling us as farmers what to do, but it starts kind of put some dollars in this space that I believe we can utilize to tell our story better to actually show that we're doing pretty good and being pretty sustainable right now. Like I've been sharing, we're not a score of 29, which means plus 29, losing carbon. Our average guy is actually only plus nine. Like, pretty good. We gotta tell that story and show, hey, we're on a path towards doing pretty good. Sure, we can all do better, of course, but there's finally now a scoring system and a business model that incentivize, it's gonna incentivize this to actually happen. So. But I don't know how soon the non-biofuel piece will be there. There's a lot of chatter, but nothing right now. What else would we want to talk about? Depend on what company is buying them. Yeah, the off-takers and stuff, like the ethanol plant. Poet versus yeah. Else. Yeah, good question. So he's asking, okay, what about differences between Poet versus different ethanol plants and stuff, right? So all of them are able to tap into these credits. The difference is going to be how much of the credit do they share with you, right? If they can just get the farmer data and pay the bare minimum, they're going to do that, right? Get the farmer data, get the bare minimum. This is a QR code too that uh, you can uh, gives you a little form that you can fill out, and uh, and it'll it sends you just an email with some more info so you can check it out later. But different ethanol plants are going to have different requirements and incentive to pay you, right? If, if farmers don't know the value of this data and they sell it for four cents a bushel or five cents a bushel or 10 cents a bushel, we might say, sweet, that was 10 cents a bushel more than what I had before. Sure, I'll give you some data. Well, what's in it for them? What I'm telling you is on my farm, my score of negative 4.1 is actually worth $1.92 a bushel. If I sell my data for 10 cents a bushel and I'm leaving $1.82 on the table for the biofuel company to take, it's great for them, but I kind of got hopes, right? So the whole point here is, hey, we can work together here. There's great money in it for them and for us. This is not a farmers versus biofuel. This is a, hey, let's work together. Let's maximize this opportunity, but we gotta have some sharing. So step one is start talk, I, I, step one is start talking to your ethanol companies to your grand buyers. There's a lot of pilot projects going on around this area. I know Valero is working on stuff. Corn LP has pilot projects that was going on. Uh, some of you guys might have been at that meeting. I was out with John Deere, what, a year or something? Um, 
a lot of different programs going, but in order to really have a conversation, I encourage you to know what your score is. Will, nope. you, will you be able to stack them? Like we sell the Valero, or sell our grain to Valero, and Valero comes in and mails our stocks? Yeah, so I think on the stock piece might work because you're selling the corn in one direction and the stock's in a different direction. They each have a different score. That could work. Now, where you won't likely be able to stack is a different carbon program versus this because if Bayer or Indigo or somebody like that is paying you to reduce tillage or do cover crops and stuff, plus Valero or Poet or somebody is trying to take a claim, I don't think we're going to be able to do that. Now, we don't know yet, okay? So... We don't know what the opportunity is going to be on the two, but I'm at least on my farm. I'm not signing up for anything else because I see that my score, um, my CI score is worth a dollar ninety-two, and even if I can get half of that as a farmer, ninety-six cents a bushel on two hundred twelve bushel of corn would have been more than two hundred dollars an acre in my pocket. So I'm trying to not screw myself out of an opportunity. Yes, sir. <coughs> Does the, does the identity of the actual corn need to be Great question. Like, let's say you have half your fields are doing one way and half another. Do you actually have to isolate that corn, or is this, is this all just track on paper? It's a good question. I think it's going to end up being weighted averages, right? Okay, so say you've got half your farm that is close to the hog buildings and gets manure, and half your farm that doesn't get manure. They're going to have very different CI scores, but it depends on when your grain gets aggregated, okay? So it depends on, are you selling your corn straight to town? Therefore, you would know what field it came from, and you would know the CI score of that field and of that load of corn. And the CI score goes on the scale ticket, it goes on the load. But if your grain gets aggregated, what, you'll, what will help you do is get a weighted average of all, say you got 12 fields, your, every one of your 12 fields will have its own score. But when you aggregate the grain together, now at your grain site, you got 400,000 bushels aggregated together, and all 400,000 bushels will have one weighted average CI score. That way, every time you sell corn and pull out of that grain site, they all have that same score, because we're not gonna track all this stuff, right? We're not gonna put the low carbon corn in this bin and the high carbon corn over here. Like, I don't see that as happening. I see this as an opportunity to say, hey, I did go and till that field, and so it was wet in the spring and I had to get it dried out, that's fine. It's gonna hurt the score, but if this other field, if you were able to just strip till it or no-till it, that one have a low score. But when you <coughs> average them together, now you're able to monetize the whole, the whole lot. But, so weighted averages is the short answer. I don't think it'll be identity preserved all the way through. I don't think it's gonna be worth it. And I don't think logistics-wise, I don't think it's gonna work out very well. We work with a company called Bushel that helps with that grain tracking. We were actually at Fargo last night and had, had dinner with the CEO. So those logistics will get worked out that way. Well, one last Processors, are they very serious about working with growers on this? I mean, Absolutely. They, you, you don't have to persuade them too hard? No, I'm not having to persuade them. What I have to persuade them on is, of course, grain processors want the data and want to make as much margin as possible, right? Sure. That's the whole name of the game. Now, what I'm convincing them of is saying, hey, these are federal tax credits. Lying is called fraud. <laughs> we need to make sure that the data we plug in this is legit. And so that's what we're helping farmers to independently get third party verified. Now, it's already got the same approval. It's already legit. And those farmers that have their data, that have that stamp of approval, they should get paid more because they're reducing the risk and you should be getting paid your fair share of these credits. But what I love about this versus other carbon programs is it's not some board somewhere saying we want to do sustainability and it comes out of their PL. This is tax credits where the lower the carbon intensity score of the gallons, the more money for everyone. Now the ethanol company might make a smaller piece of the pie, but a smaller piece of a much larger pie is better for everybody. And I think we can get a lot more farmers to be able to participate, to be able to um, utilize some of these technologies and be more efficient and share sharing those dollars. So what kind of documentation are you suggesting? Mm -hmm. I mean, like if, if a person um, did a cover crop, yep. I mean, you just decided to, you decided to stamp it on a sheet that I did it? Yeah, no, so it'd be just like... What, what's involved in documenting? Yeah, good question. So question on, on verification, how are we going to document this? And, and my approach is every claim 
that we're going to make, we need to have some way to back it up. So for cover crop, the seed receipt, the shape file, the as applied, maybe a picture. Um, in the spring, we have a scouting app in our system. We can use satellite imagery, you know, to be able to verify. There's lots of different ways to, to get it done. Also, I'm assuming it'll just be like reporting to the FSA office on your, your annual crop reporting, right? Where there's, you say, here's what I did, and you sign an attestation letter, and if you lie and they audit you, you're in big trouble, of course. This is, it's gonna be just like that for any federal government program. But the more data we can bring in to show the verifier, this is what we did, here's our claim, Here's the data that I've got to back it up. So we're working with ag retailers and folks like that as well that can help with the receipts and with those as applied maps and stuff on, on co-op coming in and spreading fertilizer, things like that. So, but basically just think of it as, as you go through this year, even if you're like, if you're, uh, it, no matter what going forward here for this program or other sustainability programs, it's all gonna take data. If we want paid for the things that we're doing, you have to prove it. You're gonna have to have the data to show that what we're doing is legit. So it's gonna be record keeping of the shape files, the receipts, all that. So question, Mitchell, if we're helping growers enter their data yep. into topsoil, yep. are the ethanol plants gonna have access to topsoil no, 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 to no, see no. that? No, 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 no. no. We just have, we, we can produce the documentation to prove it. That's right. So how it works, and that's why I like this and why I'm, why I'm here, why Larry invited us. In our system, the farmer owns their own data. If the farmer wants to give you, Larry, the access because you're their agronomist, that's up to them. It's the farmer's data. We don't share it with anybody. And it's laid out in, when you create, if you create an account, we have a terms and conditions deal. You can read the whole thing. You own your own data. It lays out exactly what we have rights to. And we don't have any right to share it with anybody without the farmer's permission, okay? That's the key. When data is shared, because you're, in order to, get paid, that CI score needs to end up on scale ticket. But all they need to see is the score. And that would, it was verified. That's it. They don't need all the data to back it up, and they don't want all that data to back it up. It's way too complicated, way too much stuff. But they know that it's already passed verification, and if they get audited, that data is sitting secure in topsoil. Because in many cases, we have a lot of the data already. Agreed. So you already have the mass majority of what's needed. So like we don't have to have to go through all that. All we have to be able to do from a data standpoint is uh, whatever claim we are making, which essentially the claim is here's my 15 fields. Here's the field, here's the acres, the bushels I produced, and the CI score. That's what we show the verifier. They're called eco-engineers in West Des Moines. So we show eco-engineers, here's the field, the acres, the bushels I produced, and the score. Because you're basically verifying your number of bushels, right? You have X number of bushels with verified scores that you can now go and sell. And they just need to see, okay, you say you produce on that field, you say you had 20,000 bushels come off of that field, okay, I need to be able to see the data to back that up. You say the score was a zero, okay, I can see the info that you say um, what goes into that score, and I can see that you have the receipts, the shape files, the data, to back it up. It sounds like a lot of stuff, but that's why we're working with local guys like Larry that already have a lot of the data. You guys have a lot of this info. It's just kind of fragmented right now. We just gotta be able to help get that pulled together so we can go through verification and get paid. I'm anticipating that this should take the farmer less than a half hour a month because we can pull the data on the back end. If you got stuff that's in John Deere Ops or in Field View or it's in SMS or different places, that's fine, we just need to know kind of where is it, and we can help you to get it, get it pulled together and try to make this as simple as possible. For, for me too, <laughs> I'm trying to make this as simple as I can because we got a lot of bushels that are gonna need this score. And so that's all I can maybe leave you with here too is this CI score in this program is gonna happen whether you want to or not. If you sell grain to the ethanol plant, whether it be direct or through the co-op, that grain will have a score. It's either 29 or it's the farmer entered data through a verification box. Soybeans? Soybeans plays the same thing. Yep, so good question. So I've talked pretty much about corn to try to simplify, but soybeans, it's the exact same type of thing. Same type of credits, same type of opportunity. The, the dollars per bushel isn't quite as good, 
Okay, that's the difference. It's still pretty dang good. Um, so for example, my my corn CI score is worth about $1.92 total, and then I could get a portion of that. For soybeans, we're looking at significantly less than that, maybe more in the you know, 50 to 80, maybe a dollar, 50, 80 cents, maybe a dollar, total pie, and then you share in that. And um, the dollars just can maximize a lot faster when you're talking a 50 cent to a 75 cent premium on 220 bushel corn, the math gets really exciting. If you're talking about a 50 cent premium on 70 bushel soybeans, it's good, really good money for a $5 program, but it, uh, I like the corn one better. A little bit more exciting. But it is all of it. Um, we can also do uh, their scoring right now for sorghum and for rice. Canola will be added in the future. Um, but that scoring system is a Department of Energy thing, so it's kind of limited as it exists today. But, but yeah, um, in the last kind of piece, there's already this stuff moving for sustainable aviation fuel. You guys might be reading and hearing about sustainable aviation fuel. It's the same type of credits um, ethanol, biodiesel, renewable diesel, and sustainable aviation. So just something to be paying attention to. If you want more info, Larry can connect you or all my stuff on there. Happy to chat more. Um, we do like webinars and stuff all the time. So just be watching this stuff. And um, really like action time is going to be as we go and get into the planters here this spring, make sure you're keeping those records um, because it's, it's this entire year of production that needs to be documented. We're getting our customers going now because what we did this fall is already part of my corn in 2024's footprint. So the tillage yard did, cover crop that you may or may not have put on, manure, fertilizer, the stuff you already did this fall is part of your 2024 corn footprint. So be thinking about that and be documenting here um, to tap into some of these dollars. And uh, the better the data, the more ability to actually get paid for it. But step number one is just, just make sure that you know the value of what you've got. We have the solution for these groups, sustainability goals and all this stuff. And the targets are gonna move, right? The goalposts are gonna continue to move. This is the hot thing. But what I like is the concept. No matter what, as we continue to go throughout the future of farming, we're gonna have to document the practices that we do run equations about our impact, our environmental footprint, whether it be water quality, like it's already been pushed hard in this neck of the woods, carbon, biodiversity, nutrient density, like we were just talking, like it's those outcomes that's gonna continue to drive opportunities. So just uh, whether we make like sure you're position. Whether we like it or not. Whether we like it or not. So I just wanna make sure that the ability for the family farm to be the one that wins and actually makes money and isn't just forced to do this. The ability to make sure that we stay in that value chain is to know what the data is actually worth and know what's in it for the other guy. When somebody's asking you for data, when people are asking you for records, you need to know what's in it for them, right? And how do you help them meet their goals? And let's work together. It's not us versus them. This is an incredible opportunity for collaboration. So anyway. I'll leave it at that, but thanks hey, everyone for it. Mitchell, one, Go for one it. thing on the documentation piece, as you mentioned coming into spring and, and keeping track of things, a lot of people in the room are managing that data in your planter monitors, in your sprayer monitors. If you're going to rely on that, you need to make sure things are named appropriately. Yeah. Okay? You get a lot of planting data and set it to Cal 6297, it's this corn sucks. <laughs> <laughs> On the sprayer monitor, it's not Biochop, it's Larry's Pixie Juice. <laughs> if you want to use that data, you got to name it appropriately. If you help with that, we'll help you with that. It's, it's totally doable. That's a important piece of this, okay? That is a good point. <laughs> well, well, thanks, Larry. As I said here, watch this. Yeah. Basically, Wrong. What you guys are doing is the organic farmers have been doing for decades. That's right. Except you're having to take, we take our value of the crop, and you're trying to take your value out of the carbon. That's right. But it's the same kind of thing, right? So your crop, you're exactly right. That's a great point, okay? Because what happens in organics, right? You're creating additional premium and value on the crop because of how it was grown. Right. What do you have to do? Record keeping field by field. 
auditing and verification field by field in order to tap that premium. Same thing. Also, give your landlords or other people what has gone on in that field. Yeah. Uh, as far as size. Sure. Things like that that they're applying to. Sure. 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 Um, and with this, what in this program, like it's there isn't uh, penalties for doing some of these things, no. But it's all those practices are going to just influence the score. Yeah. So it's a great, it's a great analogy. Anyway, guys, I better let, you, let things keep going. Thanks, Larry. Thank you.